This video provides an overview for using the Opticom log information available from most current generation Opticom IR and GPS systems. Opticom logs have been available for the last 20 plus years. In today's day and age, the emphasis on big data and the Internet of Things has accelerated the use and interpretation of these logs. Different people within our customer base have different goals for the information contained within Opticom logs. Common uses of the data include troubleshooting Opticom system components, observing EVP and TSP vehicle usage trends, and verifying traffic controller communications. Throughout this session, we will review the logs that are retrieved from the on-site software directly connected to either a 764 face selector or a 2100 series Opticom GPS vehicle kit. This information may also be re retrieved from Opticom Central Management Software, CMS. The basic difference is that CMS allows you to collect all the information from intersections and vehicles simultaneously where on-site takes a one intersection or one vehicle at a time approach. CMS also adds some value-added information to the logs that uh, provide things like vehicle name and operating agency. This assumes that you have provided that information to CMS so that it can be added to the logs. Within OnSite, the use of Opticom logs starts by selecting the Retrieve Logs button once successfully connected to a face selector or 2100 series vehicle kit. These devices store up to 10,000 log entries, so it may take a while to download all of them. An option to only download the most recent 100 is possible. Also, if you press the Cancel button while retrieving logs, all the logs retrieved to that point will be displayed. First, let's start with troubleshooting examples. Opticom logs are a great tool to bridge the communications between vehicle owning agencies and intersection owning agencies. Many times the vehicle agency contacts the intersection agency with a general and vague question like, why is my Opticom not working? Once basic troubleshooting questions have been asked to narrow down whether there was one particularly troublesome vehicle or intersection, the Opticom logs can be used to verify details such as direction or channel, call duration, vehicle ID, whether a preempt output was generated, and if not, the no preempt clause. Especially when troubleshooting, it is important to be sure to view individual log entries in context with the other log entries chronologically before and after. This could point to or confirm helpful information about the sequence of events, such as vehicle disabling, vehicle turning, or additional vehicle force-offs that may have taken place during a series of preemption calls. It is also important to look at all the columns since the answer is often determined only by looking at one or more than just one or two columns. When looking at the no preempt cause column, it is important to understand what that column is saying. Even though the column is called no preempt cause, it may also list the reason a particular log entry was terminated and a new one started. Also, the no preempt clause listed may have been true for part of the call that was logged, but not the whole time. This is why it is important to look at all adjacent log entries. Next, let's review vehicle usage trends. One popular use of Opticom logs is to calculate travel time between two intersections along a given corridor. This application is usually only available to Opticom GPS system users due to the fact that Opticom log timestamps are constantly GPS synchronized. In using an Opticom IR system, be sure to use some system for keeping your clocks updated, such as CMS or an external time sync. Using logs to calculate travel time can be tricky due to the fact that 
A log entry is created every time there is a status change within a vehicle kit. A disable input, a turn signal input, a, a request conflict from another vehicle, etc. As a result, it is necessary to review multiple log entries to select which one is the most likely EVP or TSP triggering log. Also, it is necessary to have coded all vehicles so that vehicle specific timestamps appear in the Opticom logs. Without vehicle coding, logs for all vehicles look the same. The sort and filter capabilities of the on-site log screen are very powerful. Usually, it is easiest to view and sort the logs from within on-site. However, if you prefer, you may export the logs, uh, exporting logs to Microsoft Excel, then creating multiple sheets to perform individual log selection is very helpful. The basic technique for calculating travel time is to select the triggering log for one particular vehicle at intersection A, select the triggering log for the same vehicle at intersection B, and use spreadsheet formulas to calculate the difference. This results in an individual trip travel time. Pairs of intersection A, intersection B logs can be accumulated for calculating an overall travel time for a given period. Once a decent sample of log pairs are created, spreadsheet techniques can be used to observe results, such as average travel time. This is just one example. Several other applications for viewing vehicle trends using Opticom logs have been used throughout our customer base. Lastly, Let's review the use of Opticom logs for verification of traffic controller communications. There are a few common fields that are captured in the Opticom logs that help with these efforts. One of them is the call duration field. Let's say an emergency incident takes place at a signalized intersection and the emergency vehicle held the green light throughout the process of administering aid. While the proper method of avoiding this condition would have been to properly wire the disable wire in the vehicle to shut off when the emergency vehicle parked, the unnecessarily long call was still placed. Observing the call duration column in the Opticom log would verify the length of time that the call had been made to the controller in order to turn the light green. Logs could also be used to put this exception incident in the context with more typical calls at the same intersection over time. The resulting action could then be taken by the traffic signal maintenance personnel, which would include using on-site to reduce the max call time. This would minimize the impact of unnecessarily tying up an intersection during preemption. Other fields that help with the verification of traffic controller communication include the preempt output, final greens, and green times fields. The preempt output field confirms the specific output that has been selected for input into the traffic controller. Final greens indicate which phase the traffic controller uh, was in at the time that an EVP or TSP call ended. The greens time field indicates the amount of time that the phase listed was in green when the EVP or TSP call ended. Using the Opticom logs to observe how much time buses are getting green in a TSP application is a possible application of using this information. Both the final greens and green times fields will only be populated when the 768 auxiliary interface panel is properly connected to the phase selector and the load switch green terminals within the traffic cabinet. Making these connections is described in the AIP usage and installation video. If you would like GTT technical support to review logs, please save and send the logs in the native on-site format, not exported to Excel. Also, please send the on-site configuration file.